All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do my first tutorial for, for uh, Star Citizen. I do uh, farm sim tutorials all the time and tutorials in some other games, primarily farm sim. But I, I want to share this information with you because mining Quantanium can lead you to a very rich and prosperous life in Star Citizen. Um, and so I wanted to show you how to do it. Um, I would say realistically, you can make approximately $250,000 per hour of time spent in the game. I know there's some people that make wild claims that you can make $300 million in an hour. You see these guys all the time. I made $10 million in my first hour. Okay. There's luck. There's people that can do really quick uh, mercenary missions sometimes that don't run into any issues during those very buggy operations. Um, and they get lucky. This is a very consistent, non-luck-based way to make money in Star Citizen. Uh, now, once again, this is patch 3.17.1. Things may change. Uh, as the game progresses, values of minerals will go up and down, and we may see, like right now, Quantanium is worth a ton of money. That might change going into the future, and it'll be more balanced, and Quantanium will not be worth as much as it is now. But right now... It's a good way to make a ton of money. So the first thing that you're going to need is a MISC Prospector. Mine is damaged. I need to fix it, as you can see. I raced in last time. I crashed into something. You see this engine's not running, and this one is. So we're going to have to get that fixed on the pad. But my point is this. Um, if you've rented a Prospector, you're you're not going to be able to upgrade it to the head that you need to easily mine Quantanium. You can still follow this tutorial and attempt to mine the Quantanium, but what I'm telling you is it's going to be much more difficult than if you own your Prospector. So you either need to buy one in-game for two point whatever million dollars or, you know, bite your... Crunch your teeth together, melt down your other ships, and purchase your own prospector. Um, because that's the only way to get the Lancet Head. The Lancet Head is available at uh, Port Olisar. So you're going to need to go to Port Ali to get the Lancet Head for your prospector. Um, but if you're renting one, like I said, you can try to follow this tutorial, but it's going to cause some problems. Um, so, we are here, and there's a couple different places you can do this, but I prefer this one, and, and there's a couple reasons why. We are at the space station CRU-L1. Now, CRU-L1 is particularly good for quantum miners because the refinery gives you a 3% bonus on quantanium production. So, if you mine here, you actually get 3% more quantanium than you'll get at the other refineries. And it also is a little bit cheaper to do it here. It doesn't charge you as much to process that quantanium. So you get a double-sided bonus by coming out of CRU L1. Once again, that's Crusader L1. And um, so that's the reason why I've chosen this base. And once again, we are using the Prospector with the Lancet head. I'm not using any other mining modules. Mishaps happen. And the modules disappear when you die. So if you have a Lancet head, that stays. But any modules that you add to help in mining, like the ream modules and stuff, they disappear if you have an accident. So I'd prefer not using those those objects. You can if you want. But I found that I'm fine using it this way, and there's no issue. So there's a Drake taken off there. Uh, cutlass. Um so let's go ahead and hop in. The first thing that you're going to need to do is pretty simple. You're going to need to go into your menu system and go to your options. You're going to go to your key bindings, and you want to go to advanced control customization. Then we're going to go to our uh, hold on one sec, our flight radar section here, and you're going to see here we have active activate ping. That's what sends off your mineral finder. Then you're going to have an increase ping angle and a decrease ping angle. Now, I have lots of buttons on my mouse, so I assign these two to button four and five on my mouse. But you may have to come up with your own assignments. Probably you will. 
these are right now assigned to nothing, but you'll, you're going to need to be able to increase and decrease your ping angle to find quantitanium or quantanium or any other materials because this will allow you to see what kind of asteroids we're looking at, and I'll show you the, the process. But for now, the first thing you need to do is assign these. So go ahead and get these assigned, and we're going to fly out. I'm going to show you where to fly to, and we're going to start looking at asteroids. So a lot of fun. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go into our nav map. And uh, right now I am at Crusader L1. You can see there. And I'm going to go ahead and jump to Arc L3. I'm not going to go the whole route, though. I'm going about halfway there. And then we're going to cut to sublight once we get about halfway there. So uh, we'll go ahead and fire up our jump engine. Turn Z back on so I can steer. And there she is, 18,000 meters away, 18.6. And when we get to about 12.5, maybe a little closer, 12.2, that's when we're going to cut our engines. So we're on our way. And I will get back to you once we get at about, well, 13 or so. And you can see the cut and see what we're going to do. Do, 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 do. All right, we're 13-7 out. I'll let you ride in the rest of the way. Basically, you just hold down your B key to cancel your flight. Um, by here. Jump in. And you'll see, well, we appeared right in the middle of the asteroid belt. 11-9 is where I jumped out this time. And uh, we're not moving anywhere. We're going to stop for a minute and get our bearings. The next thing that I would do, just for safety's sake, because once you get Quantanium loaded into your ship, it becomes unstable. So you only have a certain amount of time to get back. Right now, look at all those asteroids. Yeah, that was a great jump. Um, we want to go ahead and get into our map. We're going to clear the route, and we're going to set our route back to CRUL1. That way, when we're ready to jump, all we got to do is turn the engine on, and we're ready to jump. Safety first, right, folks? So go ahead, and you're going you're gonna to make sure that you're going to increase your ping angle. You'll see on the left side there, going up and down, it's 2%, 360 two degrees, not percent, degrees, 360 degrees. We're going to ping at 360. That's going to bring up a bunch of asteroids. Now, anything under 12K, we can scan. I'm going to go ahead and open up my mining head. There's that. And I'm going to point myself directly at this, and I'm, re I'm reducing it down to two degrees, the, the field of view. You can see over on the left side, two degrees. And I ping this. And over on the right side, it's going to come back with an asteroid type. You see that where it says scan results? Asteroid is a P-type, and you can see, so right here to the right, I want to make sure you can see where it says scan results and cargo over on the right there. It'll say asteroid type, P-type. Okay, that was a P-type asteroid, and we are looking for Q-type for quantanium. If you get no read, what that means is the asteroid is broken. They, that's one of those asteroids in game that there's nothing there. Um, so we're going to scan this one now. Six. I try to go with the closest ones first and then work my way out. That is an E-type. Now, this is also handy if you're looking for other types, because different types of asteroids have different types of minerals. So you might be looking for an E-type asteroid that has, let's say, a grissium or something like that. So you just have to kind of check those asteroids out. And if, especially if you're mining and you're not looking for quantanium, like if you have a default prospector, another E-type, and you found that it's too hard to mine these um, uh, quantanium asteroids, you could try finding other valuable asteroids that are closer in what you can afford. And there's no reason why you still can't make hundreds of thousands of dollars mining other asteroids. You can see here with another E-type. Sometimes we find nothing. You're, here's why I say here, you get lucky. That's an N-type, so we're not looking for that. Some of these guys go out there, and the first thing they do is find a quant rock, and then they take it back. And they're like, yeah, I can make $10 million an hour. Well, they don't show you this part of the game where you have to actually fly around for 45 minutes or so looking for rocks that match that description. And what we're looking for is a very specific rock, and we'll get into that as we start actually finding some of these quantanium rocks. I'm not finding any quantanium right now. I may have to jump to relocate what we got here. That's a Q-type. There we go. So we have quantanium. So I'm going to put my scan back out to 360. I'll run one more scan so we get the box. 
and I'm going to start heading towards there. I have my cruise control set to safe speed. There's no reason to rush around. Let's see what kind of rock we get. Uh, my saying is this. If you find a single rock that has 30% or more, or two rocks that have added together 40% or more, because um, quantanium usually spawns in pairs, um, that's going to be worth mining. If it has less than that, I just leave it. Even if we find a quant rock that's 15%, I leave it, because I want to do all one trip and get it all back to the base. And I want a ship that's mostly full of quantanium. I don't want a ship that's half full. I want it to be all quantanium. So it's worth taking the extra time because you're going to go from 100,000 to like 300 or 150, I'm sorry, 250 to 300,000. Um, what's it doing? All right, so that's, we're going to slow down and I'm going to get a read on this rock. 29% quartz. And only 2% quantanium. So our first rock is a dud. So once again, I'm going to sweep out to 360 degrees of searching and start looking at some of these other rocks. Hopefully we'll find something nearby. Otherwise, what I do is I do a really short jump back towards uh, our, our space station and like just meters. There's a P-type. Can we read this one? Let's see. No, it's too far. Usually over 11 is too far, so... Yeah, that's our jump. And that is a P-type. <laughs> a lot of P-types here. If you're looking for P. Um, there's that. So zoom back into field of view 2%. And once again, once the boxes disappear, oh, another Q-type. There's a twin. That brought up two rocks. So we should have two here. We're going to run that again. Um... I have no idea why my ship's doing that, but it started doing that. This, this, there's some weird crap going on where it's it's flicking a switch. It sounds like either. It sounds like the light switch is flickering. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so let's see what this is. <laughs> Frick, For sake, what's it doing? And I can see the rocks right there. There's a pair of them. Once again, quantitative usually. Quantanium usually comes in pairs. Strange thing, there's a ghost in my ship. Alright, so let's see what these guys got. First asteroid, what do we got? Nothing so far. Come on. This one's got pretty high resistance and very low quantanium. Not worth it. And 2%. So, crapola. All right, so let's keep looking. I'm going to keep looking. I'll be back when I find something worthwhile. But you can see here already, yeah, this is not as... You could, oh, yeah, we get out there and do, you do three runs in 45 minutes. No, you can't. Not usually. Now, I wanted to show you this so you can see here. I've got a set of rocks, probably Quantanium Twins, but there's no scan result coming up. And what that means is sometimes you guys run into rocks that you can't scan. That's exactly what those are. So if I fly over to them, and I will, you're going to see that they there's nothing in them. They're blank. And once again, we found a meatball. These are the ones I'm talking about where there's just there's nothing there, even though the rocks are there. Now, if you look closely at the rock, too, Usually the rocks have some kind of mineral on them that looks kind of yellowish in color or orange, coppery colored. This one, these are just blank. They got nothing. So they're asteroids, but they have nothing on them. Weird. So I haven't found much in this area. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a little mini jump, and I want to show you how to do this. Basically, I'm going to calibrate my jump engine back towards where we came. So we're now we're facing towards CRUL1. And we're going to turn our, our little engine on here and our jumper. And I'm just going to basically jump a couple feet. And we're going to cut. There we go. So, shut that engine off. And now we're still in a nice big chunky area, but we've moved 
quite a distance away from where we were, which should allow us to find some new asteroids and hopefully Quantanium. But I've been going at it now, I mean, almost half an hour. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, 10 runs a minute. Anyway, I'll be back. Oh, now here's something exciting. I just found a cluster of like five Quantanium rocks. Usually when that happens, we do find the rock that we're looking for. Um, so I'm imagining we will be done hunting now. So this is good. Yeah, I don't know why my ship's, like I said, it's doing some weird, weird stuff. But anyway, I'll be right back. Oh, honey bunches of rock. Look at all these rocks. Holy cow. All right, so let's start scanning them and see what we got. These are good. So once again, 30% are better. I'm going to check all of them, though, because we get 40% or better, we'll get 100% load. That's what we're looking for. Sorry, a mosquito just came at me. 21%, that's pretty decent. We could break two rocks and make it into one full load. If we have any others that are that size. 2%, dud. What's this little meatball? 2.4, and that's typical. Like I said, a lot of them are going to be... But you got that one. The 20 percenter is good. I want more, though. Ugh, 2 percent? Man. It's like milk. I want whole milk, man. Give me the vitamin Q. Oh, yeah. So there's a 20-year-ish percenter. So we may have to break two of these rocks to get our full cargo bay. 31 percent. Yeah. All right. Once again, still, though, I'm going to try to... I probably will break several rocks to get... I want all 100% pieces. Now we got enough to do. Okay, so wait a minute. 49%! Yeah! Eureka. That is what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get to the business of breaking. If this one doesn't work out, we'll break some of this too and get 100% load. So the goal is this. We're going to break the rock into a million pieces first. Before we start collecting the rocks, we're going to break it all up and figure out what's in each piece. Don't extract anything yet. So once you start extracting, your timer starts clicking. Uh, all right, so the first trick is here. You can see the optimal window, even with my lancet head, is very small. And these tend to be kind of unstable. So we're going to go ahead and juice this up. Go into gimbal mode so I can wiggle around my, my wiggler. You got to wiggle it just a little bit. I'll stop, I promise. So right at about 30 minutes of searching, we finally found the rock of a lifetime. And you can see here just the instability of how we went. This thing looked like it was going to break, and then it's way back down. So you got to keep wiggling it. Try to keep it wiggled in the same place. getting there and you got to really watch uh, so imagine this if we did not have the lancet head that optimal window would be half the size that it is good luck breaking that rock and that's why rentals aren't going to work for this ship you're going to have to own it and so like right now I have an expanse and a cutty red and when my expanse comes out I lose my prospector so when the expanse comes out I'm going to melt my cutty red and buy a prospector for 20 bucks and then I'm going to um, buy the Cuddy Red back by earning it. Because it's only like $2 million for the Cuddy Red. And that comes within a week or so of mine, you can get a Cuddy Red back. So uh, I'm going to buy that in game, and but own the Prospector outright. But right now, I get the Prospector for free, so I might as well just use it. Once again, you're seeing I'm having a hard time maintaining this rock because it's just... Now it's going to overcharge. Yeah, and imagine doing this with half that window. See, I'm having a hard time maintaining. Oh, and it jumps right up. Oh, 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 oh. Into the danger zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So you got to let it go. Let it go. And it's going to break, so I'm backing up. It's going to blow. Oh, no. So I can't, like I said, I can't even imagine trying to do this without the lancet head. And you saw there how quickly things went pear-shaped. <laughs> yeah, my ship is wrecked. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, once again, that can happen. So, I'm going to have to go back out. We'll get back out here. I'll find some more rocks, and we'll finish the tutorial. But uh, there's, a, there's a warning right there, and it went – I tried to back out of there as fast as I could, but it just wasn't enough. Um, when that thing starts to go, it's – and, and the, the rock – the hard part is – the rock is still there. That's the frustrating thing. So, you know, I've lost it, but it's... <sighs> Time to suicide. At least we can jump back to the spot, most likely. Well, it kept a death location, but that can't be right, because I was not 20,000 kilometers away when I died. So that freaking sucks. We lost those asteroids. I'll have to find more. I'll get some more, and I'll join up with you again in just a second. <laughs> But that shows you right there just the, the difficulty is of mining. Uh, and, you know, and I'm using the Lancet head. I can't imagine if that was half that size. Uh, and it got pear-shaped pretty quick. You saw that. Pretty much I had like a se couple seconds to respond. I cut the laser and started backing out, and it was too late. And it was enough that the minerals stayed, but it blew. Uh, one of the rocks went through the front of the ship and wrecked it. So, dang. So, finally, it's been another almost hour, or it might have been more that I've been looking for another rock. I found this 30 percenter. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. I was hoping for a 40, but yeah, we blew the last one up. So let's hope we can get this one without dying. Now you can notice this one's even got a worse optimal range than the one that we had. Oh no, there it is. Sometimes the laser doesn't come online and read right, but I spent literally almost an hour flying around looking for this stupid rock. I found a bunch of 2% rocks, 3% rocks, nothing, nothing at 30%. So we're going home with this one. I would say this one's going to yield about 200 to $220,000 worth of quantanium. That's pretty good. We're not going to get a full load, I don't think. We might if we're really lucky, but we'll probably get more like uh, lots of quantanium with a little bit of other stuff. And that happens. But like I said, if you can find those 40% rocks or a couple larger percentage rocks and then only take the quantanium home, that's worth a lot of money. So let's go ahead and warm this guy up and once again, we will be able to break this, but it does seem like it's slow. Now you can move closer and further to, to increase, like with the Lancet head, you can get up seven, I think six, we're in the optimal effective range. Try to take it easy, slowly building. You know, like I said, the modules do can help smooth this out a little bit. And we also have those new rock things that we can put on, like those wave inducers that you can stick to the rock and dial it in and hopefully, you know, improve the ability to break the rock. I haven't messed around with those too much. I don't. They probably do help. But like I said, in general, I'm very successful. That's only the second time that I've ever blown my ship up. Um in recent history so that was kind of surprising that that happened but it does happen occasionally glitches are the worst when the server like takes like hangs up for a minute and then all of a sudden you're like whoa and then it's back and you've jumped but that wasn't a glitch that was just me screwing up so all right let's pay attention now because we're getting into the zone And it's really just that hair between 95 and 100 is enough to, to, to keep it. And even at 100 now, we're losing it. Isn't that weird? And now it's starting to go up again. So you got to really watch these rocks because they are tricky. Oh, there's a jump right there. You guys saw that. That was a nice jump. Shield under attack. Boom. Okay, but we did good. Now, hopefully, what we hope for is we get lots of quantanium in one or two pieces and none in the rest. We, would, we don't want quantanium spread throughout the whole asteroid. Uh, that can happen, and we'll deal with it. Ugh, it's fractured between all these rocks. That sucks. So this one, let's see what this has. That's a nothing. That's good. 
Now, I can't wait till we have tractor beams. Hopefully, we can tractor beam these rocks, the ones that we don't want, and shove them out of the way. So we got 49% in this one, 48% in this one, 20%. Yeah, it's all over the place. That's what I wanted to avoid, but it is what it is. This probably has nothing. Yeah. So these three rocks are the ones that we have to break. Twelve percent, probably thirty percent is going to be too much. No, this one's a little tougher. And I'm realizing I forgot to set my waypoint back, so we'll have to do that before we start loading this into the uh, ship. Backing the power down. More. That's good right about there. Wow, that balanced out nicely. Not having too much fluctuation. Oh, it's starting to creep up. Back it down, back it down. Let's see, this is where it gets crazy. Like, we're, oh, out of nowhere. It's all balanced and everything, and all of a sudden, the balance just goes out the window, and it just spikes up. And that's, once again, I don't know how you would do this without the Lancet head. It's probably doable, but it's also probably super, wow, how many pieces did that make? Jeez. So we're good. That's 100% good. That's what we want to see is a bunch of 100 percenters. That's a nothing, which is good. I'd rather have it one and or not. That's a nothing. Good. That's uh, mostly ugh, messy. Hopefully another hundred percenter. Yep, two hundred percenters. That's real good. This will be a mess. And that's yeah, it's a mess. Okay. Well, that sucks. But we got 200% pieces, so that's good. If we can get four or five of them, we're doing real good. Real good. Wait, I thought we scans this already. Zid we not scans this? Yeah, we don't want that. And 40. Oh, so we got another 40%. Oh, that's good. And then there was one piece that had 20%. Which one was that? Where did that 20% piece go? Is that this? Oh, let's see. This broke weird. Okay. So we've got a 40, a nothing, and a 44. Okay, good. Well, that's good. So we got, we should be able to get a decent amount of 100% of pieces. That's nice. We get those first and put them in, and then we get the mixed ones and put them in. Start cutting back. 22%. Whoa, cut right back. Laser off. Laser off. Let it let it cool. And then put it back in at about 10%. 16, 22. And cut it way back to 11. 14. 11. Dang. 5. 10. 11. 8. Okay, I think 11, and we got it. Kaboom! All right, and then we scan each one. And what this does is the computer puts it into memory, so we re see we can remember now that one's a nothing, that one's a hundred, that one's a hundred, and that's what we do. We, so we scan each of these rocks, and we, it keeps it in memory, so we know that this one is 37%. Blech. 100%, please, please. Please. Nope. Shoot. 63. So we'll grab that one after we grab all the hundreds. Always do the hundreds first and then work your way down in percentages. Ugly. Oh, so that one broke all nasty. That's not what we wanted at all. But it is what it is. So we're not going to get a pure. 
or much of a pure haul, we're going to get a mixed haul, which sucks. But that's why I like 40% rocks, because 40% rocks is pretty much a guaranteed 100% quantanium. Usually. Fifty percent even better. Whoa, 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 okay, server lag right there. You saw that? That jump right there? Yeah. Gotta watch those. That's how you die. Twelve percent. This rock's gonna need a little bit more. Fifteen percent. Ugh, and it fell. Seventeen. Ugh, it sagged. Come on, what the frick? Talk about all over the place. See, now it's going up at 19%. 11% sagging. 21% going up. Yep, 19%. Nope, overcharge. Son of a biscuit. And it's going to sag again. God, what a stupid rock. back it out. It's going to... Uh, it might not go. Okay. Good. Keep my distance. We're losing all of our... All of our charge. It's going away. Stupid rock. Once again, you can also control how much is going into the rock from distance, but it's not as... A, Act of science. Crap. Yeah, let's do it again. This is a tough one. Hopefully this one will break clean. Maybe that means that we're going to get a nice clean. Oh, uh, we're so close. Just break. <sighs> Stupid rock. We've had some fidgety rocks tonight, man. Man. 68. God dang, gig nabbit. That did not break clean at all. <sighs> and that's got nothing in it. That's all right. Son of a biscuit. So everything went into this one piece. From what I'm seeing. Unless this is... Nope, that's not. Shoot. Weird. That's a weird break. Very, very strange break. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it do that before, where it broke into three rocks, it, and it didn't split the quantanium out. But this is the last piece that we're going to fracture. I don't know if this one's going to be worth fracturing or not. It probably won't be, but wow, this one just right into the red. Escape. Did it blow? No. I mean, I guess that's good. Mode on. That, thing, that thing went right into critical mode at like 20%. So this is a very soft rock. Or instable? I don't know. I don't know how that... Low resistance, I guess. Wow. Jeez. Why do you got to be such a pain? And of course you can't roll at any the the computer doesn't allow you to roll. Okay, now it's going to go over at 3. What? It doesn't allow you to go, um, like, you can't roll, like, one notch at a time. It just kind of jumps around. I hope they fix that, like, while you're mining. That it's not, uh, you, you need to be much more precise with the laser, and they don't allow you to do that. I'm just complaining about it, but it is weird. Okay, that's a 47%. God. Dang it. 
So we got very few 100% rocks, and that sucks. Like, that's a serious bummer. <sighs> but it is what it is. We're still going to get a lot of money. Which is it? Why am I not getting a read from that rock? Oh, come on. Okay, that's barrel and quartz. Scanning. Okay, now we're scanning. And that's our 60%, 47% quantanium. 83%. Why don't I have a read on this rock? 100%! Hey! Okay, 35%. Boo. And those are all junk. Okay, so we're going to get ready now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, plan my course so that we just go back and don't die. Set our course there. And so we're all set to use our jump drive when we need it. And I'm going to go ahead and get this laser ready to extract our 100% quantitative rock. So do all the 100% rocks first so that you get the most quantanium that you possibly can. That was a nice big rock. 30, 29, there's another 100%er. I think we had 200%ers if I don't remember right. And we got time. I'm not super rushed right now because we do have time to get back. There's plenty of time to work with. Oh, 300%. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So right there is about $100,000 in Quantanium with those three rocks. And what do we got here? This is Quartz. Nothing. 37%. 63%. 35, I can't remember which is next, 68%. That's probably one of the higher ones. 43. Why well, don't I have a read on this one? These rocks, uh, 47. Seriously? It's like my computer dropped the information. Barrel, there we go. 29. 38. 100% inert. Inert, inert. Okay, so once again, 63 seems to be like the highest ish. And once again, 37 and 35. And we have, what is the, why is that out? What the heck? 68. It should not be dropping those. That's weird. It usually keeps the whole rock memorized. I'm, I'm not happy about that, but it is what it is. That's all junk. That's all junk. So just going through my rocks one more time, just to make sure. 29 percenter. 36 percenter. Let's do that. Is this again inert so then we're going to go down to the other 30s that we have 35 37 just double checking that's the other rock we still got 13 minutes to get back we got plenty of time um, all right so 37 percent and this should probably fill us up what was the other one 35 yeah so we're good all right so now we're gonna turn the Navi computer on and race back to crul1 so here we go once again once you get into quantum mode run mode you can then well, let's get in the jump we're cruising back and you can press the m button it'll actually bring the thing out which it shouldn't be able to do that and they'll probably change that eventually. But right now you can see we're 86% stable. We got about 13 minutes, 12 and a half minutes to get back before our ship turns into vaporized dust. We're carrying 23.87 liters of, or SCU. 
And that's worth, let's see here. Where's my calculator? I'll tell you in a sec here. I'm gonna calculate this out. It'll be a little less than that, but let's just say we have 200 and, is this right? 230, I think this is how it works, 238. It actually is this 2,387 units. And you multiply that right now, the current sell price is $88. That's $210,000. So we have about $200,000 of Quantanium in our hull. And so that's not bad. Uh, it did take a little bit over an hour to get. But once again, and then you have to put it into process. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. But, um, you know, so you're looking at about an hour's time to make about 200,000, maybe a little bit more, um, but it's pretty consistent. Like I said, I never come back empty. So, and right now I have about $1.5 million worth of Quantanium cooking in the, the refinery. We're gonna take some of that tonight and sell it and see how much we made. Uh, usually, an, I think I got about an MSR full right now. So we should make some decent money um, at the end of the video. So anyway. I will catch up with you when we get closer. Sometimes these landings can be a little hairy. In a minute here, our volatile cargo uh, warning is going to go off. That's up in the upper right-hand corner there. You see it says volatile cargo right here. And that white light is going to turn yellow and start honking at us as we get closer to the base. I usually come into the base fairly quickly. But when I get in past the lights, I slow it down to maybe 300, 350 so that I don't smash into the base. Sometimes we get a little bit too scared and and you're like, you know, all hyped up to get in. We got nine minutes to get there and get on the pad and get up to the computer where we store our ship. Once you've stored your ship in the computer uh, on the base, once it goes into storage, the countdown stops. So you got to get on the pad, get up the elevator and get to the lobby. We have nine minutes to do that, which should be plenty of time. Take about, take us about three minutes to get inbound maybe a minute or so to land, and then another minute to get up the elevator, giving us four or five minutes of time on the other set, on the other end. And like I said, pretty shortly here, it's gonna start beeping, letting us know that we are starting to run out of time. Still 82% stable, so that's good. Mining mode, <laughs> Mining mode, shut up. All right, so I'll catch up with you in a sec. All right, we're getting in close here, so I'll show you my procedures. I've dropped down to 300 as we get close here, and even slower. Once again, safety is still important, even if you're panicking about getting back in time. The last thing we want to do is go f careening into the ship, so into the space station. 193 here, that should be... We should get the ATC warning here in a second, and we'll contact and get a landing pad. Usually they give us the... And thank you for contacting EDO Landing Assist. Yeah. Come on. Nope, I don't want to. No, cancel. Oh, freaking sake. There. The comms are still a nightmare. There it is. Please proceed to assign landing bay. I'm hoping they put me down here. Yep, they did. Got to watch. There isn't some clown scooting around in a the ship there. So our, our warning has started to go off. We got plenty of time. Don't panic. There's no need to rush. We'll got, we got still got at least seven minutes left. Plenty of time to get into the station. We're good. Once again, you can see why we have that that B selected or the uh, CRUL1 already selected on our nav computer before we even start mining because that saves us a lot of time trying to fumble around the menus and I forgot my track IR, so I can't look down to do my, my precision landings that I do, usually do. Engine off. Beep, beep. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Thanks. All right. <laughs> now you rush. Okay. <laughs> Let me out, let me out, let me out. Come on, letters, go, 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 go. Just leave it, it'll close itself. 
and rush back. Now, watch the elevators of doom. I've had this happen before where the elevator killed me as I was waiting. Say elevator called. Yeah. We're going to back up here and let the elevator show up. Once again, if you guys have experienced that where the elevator whacks you into the abyss, uh, it happened to me yesterday. Now, I was lucky. It still put my prospector in storage, and I didn't die. But this is ridiculous. Okay, I got to get this load going. Where's the elevator? Jeepers, criminy. <laughs> and this is why you got to leave yourself a little bit of time. Okay, now how long is it going to take us to get up to the thing? It takes a while. This is a long trip. Um, but not as bad as some of the stations, but... Come on. The only thing I hate is now we have no idea where our, our volatile cargo is at. Like, we're, we're just, it's in limbo. Hopefully it won't explode. <laughs> I know I have enough time, so I, I, I know it's not going to explode, but uh, I think. Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. To the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. <sighs> There, okay, it's safe. All right, so now we just got to head down to the refinery. Uh, and that's, you know, through the central elevators in, in the uh, station here. So. Things are better. So I'll head down there. I will see you guys down in the refinery. Oh, well, I guess I should show you because you've maybe never done this before. You go to the elevator, the inner elevator that goes to the gallery and the refinery, and click the refinery button, and we'll go down. All right, we're down here in the miner's hole. And I'll jog just for you. I'll break my legs. Ow. So you go to service, and you head upstairs. Same is true at all the stations, I believe. Uh, and we go in here, and we're going to start a process. Hi. So I've got a bunch of processes already going. Hey, thanks. I'm glad to be back. See anything you like? Two orders finished, one processing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, and we have uh, the first thing I'm going to do. Well, I'll show you that last. I'm going to select my prospector, and I'm going to set up a work order. I've got um, 2,600 liters, or SCUs, I'm sorry. Most of it is, let's see, we've got barrel, we've got quartz, and quantanium. You might as well do them all because you're going to pay for it anyway. But it does kind of knock down the space you have in your ship, but I do it anyway. And I use the Dynex solvation because, uh, or solventation, because Dynex is, it, even though it's super slow, it gives you the highest yield of all the methods. It just takes a long time. So we got basically a day and a half it's going to take of real time. That's real time. So this will be ready. It's Wednesday night. This will be ready on Friday. I'm going to confirm that. There we go. Work order accepted. So we have two work orders processing. I've got this one that's got five hours left. And I've got this one that has one day and 12 hours left. Um, in the cookers, let's see. Let's do the math here just for fun. And I've already got a ship. I've already got some in my ship, but we're going to deliver. But right now, altogether, I have 2336 plus... 2715. This is each day I go out and do one load. 2892. No, wait. What? Hold on a sec. I have 13,000 Star Citizen units, whatever, of Quantanium. That's times $88 per unit. That's $1.18 million. $1.1 $1. 1 million. Almost 1 1.2 mil. 180,000. So 1 million. 180,000. $80 worth of Quantanium, roughly, in my uh, process here. Now, we're going to move these two to my Mercury Star Runner so you can see that. So once it's done, you'll see it turn yellow. You pick the ship that you want it to go into, and you can see that I have 8,000 units left of space in my Mercury Star Runner. I'm going to collect that, dump it in there, and now we're going to take this one, and I'm going to put this in here. I've got 5,000 left. We're putting 3,000 in. Work order delivered, and we'll let these two processes continue. Continue, And now I'm going to go grab the Mercury Star Runner, and we're going to fly. Uh, 
I don't know if I want to go to Hurston or Air Corps. Probably Hurston uh, to deliver this. Maybe Air Corps. I don't know. Whichever's closer. I'll be back. And so there she stands, the T. Lee McGolf. Completely loaded up with three prospectors worth of material. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? I love this chip. <laughs> yes. It's the perfect delivery method. It delivers uh, about $800,000 worth of quantanium every trip. Now, the quantanium doesn't show up. Just your crystalline materials. Well, these are the extra materials that I've got. The thing that kind of scares me is I think in the future, they're going to change it so that these ships cannot carry quantanium. I bet you it's going to become something where the Starfarer or other ships designed to carry fuel are going to be the only fuel tankers that are, are going to work. Um, I've just got this sneaking feeling because they haven't made any on-ship containers unless, unless we start getting portable fuel containers. I'm interested to see what they do, but... Anyway, welcome to the Tule Lima Golf, my beautiful ship. Uh, this was not paid for through Quantanium. I had a friend give me some ships, and I purchased this ship using funds from Melts and the like. But it is a gorgeous, giant ship. The only downside with the Tule Lima Golf, or the Mercury Star Runner, as she's actually known, uh, mine happens to be called the Two Lima Golf, as you can see there on the side, if you look super close. Um, the only downside with her is that she requires a lot of hydrogen to operate. Unfortunately, she is a gas hog. So let's take a look here and see where we're going on the map. Skyline map. And we could, who's close? Hurston looks like it's the closest jump. So we'll set our route to Hurston. <coughs> Pardon me. And jump that direction. So I will see you guys uh, once I arrive in Hurston and uh, I get to the trade st station. So I'm going to, I'm going to be, well, maybe I'll take you with me on the walk because you guys need to know what to look for. There's, there's four TDDs. There's one in Orson. It's on the Cloudview platform, which is where the hotel is. If you come out of the hotel on Orison, it's right across in the Stratus building. There's a TDD uh, downstairs. Um, I think it's on the right side of the building when you're looking at it from the hotel. In Hurston, there's the Central Business District with all the big statues and Hurston Dynamics where they have all the big guns for the ships. That is where the trade department is on Hurston, and I'll take you there. Air Corp. It is in the main square of Air Corp, like where you come in and there's a ship dealer in there, and there's some other stores, and right in there, you'll see the TDD signs from outside, but it's in the main square in Hurston. Babbage. <coughs> mm. It's in the promenade, but you have to do some walking. Um, so you leave, like when you first come out in the promenade, you're in a place where they're jogging and you got to go to the left towards the promenade and TDD is in the promenade there. So those are the four locations where you can sell your, your mined minerals, quantanium and such. I believe you can also sell them from the kiosk in the admin section of the space stations that orbit the planet. So Everest, uh, Bangini point or whatever it's called. Port Olisar, possibly, and uh, whatever the other one is. I don't remember what the other one is, but um, I don't normally do that. I usually just go to the planet surface because I want to get the most bang for the buck, and I think they pay the best on the planet surface. So, anyway, <laughs> now I told you I'd see you when I got there, and we're halfway there. I'll see you when we get there. All right, we're on final approach into Lorville. And I need to contact ATC. So let's go ahead and give him a give him a ringy ding. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Lorville, what a mess. Gonna get any response? Oh, they did. They just didn't say anything. Okay. Try to make our way down quickly and safely. Filth that is the Lorville atmosphere. <laughs> oh boy. We're not going to collide. Well, maybe not. I know it's kind of a weird tactic that I do to land, but. And she's down safe and sound. What a gorgeous ship. <laughs> I love this thing, man. Now, they did say they're going to, when they do another pass on it, they are going to supposedly add in some way to get in and out of the ship from the front. People always complain because it is quite a walk through the entire ship to get out the back. <laughs> so there will be some kind of front entrance. They, they are working on that. But uh, I'm not sure exactly when. So, you've arrived at Lorville. What do you do now? I'm going to walk you through that. You exit your ship. Hopefully brimming <coughs> to the nines with Quantanium. If you have to carry it back in your Prospector, then you got to carry it back in your Prospector. You do the best you can. Prospector is actually pretty cheap to run, so you'd make 250000 to run, roughly. Um, but if you want to, you know, if you got a, some kind of cargo ship, that may be a better option. So let's go ahead and catch the elevator. Landing bay three, it looks like. Oh, no, hangar bay one, right? I don't know. And we're going to pack our ship away, so let's get up to the lobby. And uh, here we are on the main platform. Let's go ahead. Welcome to the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. We're going to start star our Mercury Star Runner. I'm going to start it. And that's good. So now it's in and safe. And now we're going to head to the train station and we're going to go to the central district. So here we have Metro Center for one. And we have the green central business district, green for money. Uh, that's where we want to go. So we're going to go to the Central Business District. Once again, this is only on Lorville. Everyone has their TDD in a different space. Trade and whatever. is TDD is the short. Now arriving. Stand Yay. by and let passengers disembark before boarding. All right, so I'm going to hop this train. I'll catch you on the other end. And so we've arrived at the austere trading center here in Lorville. And uh, these are the grandfathers of Hurston Dynamics, founders of the planet Hurston. Central Business District. So you head up the stairs, try not to trip and fall. I, I watched my son trip and fall and die here the other day. We had to drag him to the hospital. So he can get incapacitated by tripping down the steps. Um, and so here we have the main hall. And let's see, where is TDD? Transfers. That's that's our place here. And they have some neat sayings about how you make lots of money and grow. And here it is, the Trade Center and Hurston Dynamics. There's a private trading suite for the rich people. And there's me, who's just like a multimillionaire. Trading console. We pick our Mercury Star Runner, and we say sell. 
Oops, Mercury Star Runner. We'll sell the barrel. That's 2,000 for barrel. We'll sell our quartz. That's $500. <laughs> oh, what's this? $710,000 <laughs> worth of Quantanium. That's three trips in the Prospector. Just three trips. Is the Prospector worth it? Absolutely. And that brings our grand total to $1.6 million. I am on my way. I'm saving up right now for a $6 million ship. Um, I should hit that in a couple weeks. No no rush. And if I don't get there, I don't get there. Eventually the game will start and we'll, won't, we won't have our money erased every 10 minutes. But uh, anyway, that is it. I wanted to show you from the start to the finish how to, how to get your mining going and how to trade and, and, and sell the stuff. Um, so hopefully this was helpful to you if you've never played Star Citizen or new to the game and want to figure out what the mining's all about. Uh, but prospector mining is big money. I would suggest that you buy your own prospector, whether you do it with in-game funds or you go out and put out the 155 bucks it costs to buy the prospector. It is, I would say, probably the most easy, safe way to make money in the game. You can definitely make near that much money or that much money doing other missions and stuff, but there's all kinds of risks that go along with the, those missions, and you'll find out as you do them how buggy the game is. So mining seems to be, out of all of them, still probably the safest way to know the safest way to earn income. Have a great night, guys. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help, and I hope you guys enjoy following my adventures as I play Star Citizen. As we get closer and closer to this game actually becoming a full game, and I look forward to sharing my life as a citizen in outer space here on YouTube uh, as we go. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time. Bye.